Hello Android developers and Happy New Year! My name is Mohsen and after a long vacation, I am back with another video about documentations and how to document your Kotlin API nicely. First thing first, if you are new to this channel, I talk about useful tips and everything to do to be a better Android developer. Plus, I interview the Android community's active members and more. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like it and subscribe to this channel to support and see more of this content. Let's talk about good documentation. Documentation is anything you write in addition to your code to help someone else understand how it works. Same as Javadoc, Kotlin also has its way of API documentation. The language used to document Kotlin code is called Kdoc. Kdoc combines Javadoc's syntax and Markdown for inline markup. To export API documentation in different formats like HTML, Javadoc, or GFM, Kotlin offers Doka. Doka is a documentation engine for the Kotlin language and it can create better visual documentation for us. Using Doka repository readme details, you can easily add this plugin to your Android or Kotlin project. If you do the setup properly, you should be able to see the documentation tasks inside your Gradle tasks list. By executing any of those Gradle tasks, Doka will generate the documentation inside your build folder. Good documentation comes in different forms. The repos readme that answers several important questions about the app or library and tells you how you can execute or include it in your project, how to install it, and how to run tests. Inline comments to document code that usually isn't used to take people outside of your team and instead they explain what's happening in a particular part of code to your teammates or your future self. And last but not least, API documentations. This version of documentation is more of a reference for developers using your API. They will find answers to questions about what individual functions do and what different parameters do those functions mean. Kdoc syntax is similar to Javadoc with some extra block tags. After a short detail about what your class or function is doing, you can start adding block tags. The outer block tag specifies the outer of the element being documented. The since block tag specifies the version of the software in which the element being documented was introduced. The param block tag documents a value parameter of a function or a type parameter of a class, property, or function. After the param tag, you should put the name of that variable followed by some description. Later, we have constructor block tag. It documents the primary constructor of a class. And property block tag, which documents the property of a class that has the specified name. Here, this tag can be used for documenting properties declared in the primary constructor to avoid putting a doc comment directly before the property definitions. Let's do the same for this function. For function, we can define return block tag. It documents the return value of a function. Do not forget that by adding a square brackets, you can add reference to any elements. You may also want to add the C block tag to add a link to the specified class or method to the see also block of the documentation. Now let's add documentation to this extension function. For extension functions, we have the receiver block tag. It documents the receiver of an extension function.
We can quickly take a look into the documentation by pressing Ctrl Q in Windows or F1 in macOS. Now let's export the documentation as HTML format and take a look into it. As you can see, everything that we wrote in the documentations are now exported into HTML format. This can, for instance, be used as your library GitHub repository pages. KDoc also allows you to add documentation to modules and packages. To make it happen, you have to define a markdown file inside your project and then add it to your Docker configurations. The first level heading should be module followed by the name of the module and on the next line you can explain and document whatever you want. Also the same is about the packages. You should use the first level heading for the package followed by the package qualified name and on the next line add some details. Let's not forget that you can use the second or third level headings for the documentation and it doesn't interfere with KDoc first level headings. Later you can add this markdown to your Docker configuration and include it as one of the documentation that you want to be exported. And here is the result. Some other KDoc block tags that I skipped are trues, exceptions, and samples. You can read about them in the Kotlin documentation which I will put in the description of this video. I will also put a link to an article which is about how to write a good documentation. That's it. I hope you keep writing good documentations for your APIs using KDoc and use them to make your API users happy. Please do not forget to like and share this video with other Android and Kotlin developers and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. See you soon on another Android Developer Tips video. Bye!